One of the most common things that we hear from people who are deficit hawks, from people who differ from us on how they want to spend money in the economy, is that if you spend too much, and especially during a crisis like this, that you will have inflation. Well, something interesting happened. The, according to a new study that we find out here from the Federal Reserve, is that the coronavirus crisis has led to a general decline in prices or deflation. And actually, that is yesterday of the official tally, that we have seen the lowest inflation in American history since we started tracking it in 1957. The, Bear in mind, this is the same month that the government borrows $3 trillion. Now, right. look, there's a lot of stuff that goes into this, velocity of money. We don't need to get into all of that. No, but, but the, bo the, the bottom, bottom line, line is, is people aren't spending money. People are not spending money. Also, I mean, you can see this. Consumer prices have posted the biggest decline since 2008 as coronavirus wow. continues to put a clamp on inflation. So you can see this, I mean, not just in gas prices, across all things. I mean, others are saying that there's a spike in food prices and some other consumables. I, I, obviously, that seems to be the case because of just how weird this pandemic is. But the doom and gloom cited on hyperinflation for whenever we had that initial bailout package, it just did not come to pass. Right. And deficit hawks need to reconcile themselves with that. That is one of the biggest things that they've always warned. They're like, oh, we're going to have crazy inflation. It's just not true at, at, this current, at this current time. I'm not saying it couldn't be true, but right. in terms of the velocity, in terms of the amount of money that's moving through the system, lower than ever. I mean, consumer prices having a 2008 massive decline. Some of that is due to the gas industry, and I know that there's a whole lot that's going into their demand, right. etc. But in, this is a, the purest form of like when there's no economic spending, no economic generation consumer uh, fiscal spending is not going to lead to hyperinflation that these people always said would be. And this is one of the best data points that we have. Well, and, and we've heard yeah. so many times right. this like inflationary fear mongering, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And we should be clear, a deflationary spiral has its own sort of disaster is a, yeah. is a big yeah. problem as well. And our country hasn't faced those sorts of fears since the Great Depression and that era. And what happens is basically you get into this cycle where because prices are going down, people put off spending because why would you buy the thing now right. if the price is only going to go lower? And since they're not spending, mm -hmm. then it goes even lower. And so you get into this cycle that persistently depresses consumer spending, which, of course, our whole economy is built around. So deflation is a problem in and of itself during right. these times. Um, yeah, it was interesting. You know, we had a debate with uh, with Stephen Moore right. yesterday, and he's making the point like, oh, you know, every dollar that gets spent is a dollar that comes from American taxpayer, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, that's not actually like well, we have this thing that, you know, where we print money. It's a little bit different there was than also how your this household works. Outrageous claim that he said, where he said that the government cannot stimulate the economy. Now, think about that. I mean, this is in 2020. He's talking as if the year is 1886 in terms of his, uh, and I mean, really, I mean, that is literally the sophistication of that economic argument. It would be as if the New Deal and the 1930s and uh, literally never happened. And, you know, I'm reading, I have a Josh Barrow piece in front of me because there is some complexity to this where he talks about prices have not fallen in every industry where right. sales volume is down. For example, like dental services did not change in price. So in terms of the way that this is actually affecting consumers, the prices that have fallen are not necessarily the ones that we're consuming. But the way that affects the overall, like the overall inflation or deflation of money is actually still kind of the same. Like we could still be in a deflationary spiral. And we need to recognize that when we're talking about our fiscal response. And like he says, Everything during pandemic is super weird, including yes. how inflation and all that is has come to pass. But look, they have to recognize their doom and gloom did not come to pass in the largest spending period in American history. Somebody's got to reconcile that if you're one of those people who's been screaming about it from day one. Yeah. So I think this is a very important data. And, and by the way, reconcile it in real time. Right. While people are hurting and we still need a massive fiscal response, like take inflation off of your list of concerns. Mm -hmm. We're okay there for the yeah. moment. At least for the time being. Yes. Okay. All right. More rising for you after this.